All right. So Miss Stewart came to court. She's smoking. She's eating. She's drinking her Dr. Pepper. She's licking her fingers. I'm sorry that I need to take care of myself and eat. Is that the way you'd behave in my courtroom if you were sitting right in front of me? I choose not to answer this question. Well, she had one, two, three, four charges dismissed. I never, I never once told if him that. Stuart, I would... do not interrupt me. This isn't even legal. What's not legal? Can I do like weekends or something? I have an interview today. Um, I've only been unemployed for a week. Um, ma'am, I just started working, um, but I have to go to orientation tomorrow. I was working, but it didn't work out. Um, we had a uh, disagreement. But I'm starting work at McDonald's. How long have you had this job? I'm just starting, and I that's how I'm going to start. Tomorrow, I go to orientation tomorrow. That's what you told me last time. Let's just start your sentence. I'm not fucking doing it. Hey, hey. Oh, no, this is going to be good. I can tell already. Let's uh, go ahead and take up this 2023 TR381 State of Kansas versus Rebecca Stewart. Please announce appearances. Your Honor, State of Kansas appears by and through Assistant County Attorney Paul Dean. Uh, Richard Pong, on behalf of Re Rebecca Stewart, who does appear. And how does she wish to proceed, Mr. D uh, uh, Mr. Judge, uh, she is working on her license back. She has to pay some fines. I know that the uh, county attorney does give, uh, you know, uh, defendants uh, an opportunity to try to get their license back. Judge, she states that it'll probably be uh, right at the first of the year. I would, I would ask for the January date if that's if the state doesn't have an objection. Mr. Dean, as you know, I don't have my file. How long have, has this case been going on? I've had her one time, Your Honor, <laughs> and that was with Miss Cooper. Case has been on file since May. Yeah, May. Yeah. Yep. May. Well, I was, it, the offense was May 19th. So we would add court. I think the first appearance was sometime in, yeah, it was in May. And at that point in time, Shannon was appointed. I'm not sure what the delay was in between there, but okay. So I'm not sure. Is Miss Stewart the one that you had to call down for smoking a while ago, Missy? Yes. All right. So Miss Stewart came to court. She's smoking. She's eating. She's drinking her Dr. Pepper. She's licking her fingers. We need to take this seriously, Miss Stewart. You've got a court-appointed attorney working hard for you <laughs> trying to get a continuance, and you're sitting there in your living room just not taking this seriously. I am it's taking this seriously, but I'm sorry that I need to take care of myself and eat. Is that the way you'd behave in my courtroom if you were sitting right in front of me? You'd bring your Dr. Pepper and your food and your cigarettes in and, and start helping yourself? Is that what you do in the courtroom with me? I choose not to answer this question. Well, this isn't one of those. You have the right not to to uh, incriminate yourself. You've already done that. Continuance denied, Mr. Paul. I don't think this defendant has an attitude that is. I think if we come back in here in December, she's probably not going to have helped herself any. So continuance denied. How do you wish to proceed at this time? You need another breakout room? Judge. Well, I would I would least I would least like to uh, meet with the state and uh, you know, Judge, if you don't want to do the January, can we just set it off one month? We're gonna have to set it for a trial, Your Honor. There's really not a whole lot I've got here, so. I mean, I don't okay. have an officer to proceed with the trial. So whatever trial date the court wants to give us. Ms. Stewart, you want a trial? Yep. Yep. All right. December 8th at 11 o'clock. 
And Ms. Stewart, make sure you do all your smoking, drinking, eating, finger licking, all of that before you come back December 8th for trial. You understand that? Yeah. All right. And I trust that you'll have a much better attitude when you come back. All right. If there's nothing further. We'll be in recess on Stewart. Several months later. We'll now be on the record in 2023 TR381, State of Kansas versus Rebecca Stewart. Paul Dean for the state, Richard Paul for the defendant. Rebecca Stewart, did she not appear today? No, Your Honor. She was supposed to be here on her third or subsequent conviction for driving while suspended and no insurance dating back to May 19th. 2023, recommendations from the state, Mr. Dean? Your Honor, I guess at this point in time, I don't have anything to request other than a bench. Mr. Paul, anything you can share with us? Yeah, Judge, we have a resolution to the case. We have a proposed journal entry. I spoke to my client last week and she was going to enter in that and we were going to do it on the record today. Um, she has been in good contact. I don't know what has happened today, Judge. So, Judge, I would ask for a continuance. Um, I know that the the, uh, the uh, state has asked for a bench warrant, but that, that's my position. Well, she's got a long history uh, in this case. Her first appearance was back May 23rd, and we've had it continue to, uh, looks like, July 7th at the defendant's request, October 13th. She was here smoking, drinking Dr. Pepper, eating, smacking her fingers, and uh, had the attitude, quote, I have to take care of myself, end quote, when her demeanor was addressed, uh, but it was set over to December 8th, and she was reportedly working on getting her license reinstated really close, and it was continued without objection to today. She was continued on her bond, which looks like it was set in May for Reduced the bond was reduced from five thousand to three hundred cash. I'm sorry, three thousand cash or surety. So Thomas Taylor is the bondsman on it. There is a professional surety. Say that again, please. I didn't hear you. There, there is it. Oh, yeah. There's a professional you know, surety. The old green deal around wasn't lighting up when I was talking. Uh, there is a professional surety on that bond. Thomas of three thousand. Yes. <clears throat> So recommendations, Mr. Dean, did you, what did you say? I'm sorry. Your Honor, I'd requested a bench warrant. I guess at this point in time, I'm still going to make the request for the bench warrant, but I would stay execute, I'd stay basically issuing it until Monday at five, given Mr. Paul's contact. Well, if the defendant is uh, more respect for the court, I'd, I'd be more inclined at this point i am going to issue bond forfeiture bench warrant uh new bond set at three thousand cash or surety but i will stay the execution of the bond you said monday at five yes sir sure. <clears throat> and if she shows up what what do you propose uh we do to handle that mr dean because our next you better, she better please <laughs> Oh, hey, what, what, Judge, here here would be my solution. If I can get a hold of her and get her in my office, we have a journal entry. I would just have her sign it and submit it to the court by so e-file. What, what does this journal entry propose since she's been driving while suspended? This would be at least her third. Judge, the uh, the uh, $300 fine, court costs, attorney fees, booking fee. 12 months probation, uh, early possible early termination if no law violations and she's able to reinstate while on probation. Because count uh, one is going to be risk. dismissed, Judge. Yeah, and uh, 300 dollars fine, court cost during fees, and control sentence. You're saying you would dismiss a third time driving while suspended that carries a mandatory minimum of 90 days up to a year? Did I hear that right? 
Yes. Dismissing that for the no proof of insurance, yes, Your Honor. Which is also going to suspend her license. Uh, my order will stand that so she shows up Monday. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Four to six weeks later. We're on the record in uh, 2023 TR381, State of Kansas versus Rebecca Ann Stewart, Mary Ann Shirley for the state. Ms. Stewart, you're going to need to start your audio and video to participate, if you would, please. Rebecca Stewart. I can't give you credit for being in court if you don't participate. I, I, I'm trying to get it. Okay. You've got your volume. Do you see the little rip? There we go. Okay. You got it. All right. So Mary Ann Shirley for the state. Sure. The defendant in person and the pro se. This is not your first appearance. That was back May 23rd of 2023. You've had one, two, three, four more hearings since then, including a bench trial that was set for January 19th of 2024. You'd asked for a bench trial and then failed to appear. Uh, because I was, I was under the impression, like my lawyer, um, he told me that we worked out some deal that I was supposed to get unsupervised probation and uh, fined. So I wasn't for sure on that. Well, if he was trying to work out a deal, you would have needed to show up and accepted the deal. Oh. Did you get arrested on your bond, uh, get arrested on your warrant and make your bond? Yes. All right. Well, then we're going to need to give you another court date, and you'll need to call Mr. Paul, but he's in trial right now, so he's not available as, as we speak. Okay, right, thank you. Are you in a hurry to be heading somewhere? You're welcome. Now, I need to give you another court date, or my assistant, Missy, will. Okay. March 29th at 10 o'clock. March 29th at 10 a.m.? Yes. All right, thank you. You need to go do drugs or something? No, don't. You're welcome. And, but don't miss that court date. You need to be here, or you're going to get revoked again on your bond. And okay. okay, well, that would be Zoom as well. Uh, yes, that will be by Zoom. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And call Mr. Paul before that date, please. I will. Thank you. Then you're continued on your bond with the added conditions that you call Mr. Paul and you reappear with him by Zoom March 29th at 10 a.m. Okay. Thank have you. a good day. You too. We'll be in recess on Stewart. Two weeks later. We're now on the record in 23TR381, State of Kansas versus Rebecca Ann Stewart. Please announce appearances. Richard Paul, on behalf of Rebecca Stewart, who appears uh, via Zoom in a remote location in the council. The state appears by Jill Gillette County Attorney's. Well, this is a case. It looks like we've had quite a few appearances. Judge, so, yeah, yeah, we have we, we have a disposition in this case. We have an announcement. All right, she did fail to appear for a bench. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. What's your announcement, please? Judge, uh, actually, we we got the the plea agreement done at the end of last year, and now we're just doing it. Um, okay. Mr. Dean and I. Um, it uh, dismissed count one. Plead guilty to count two. You're dismissing a third driving while suspended, Ms. Gillette? Uh, I've got Mr. Dean's notes here. Okay, so Mr. Dean's dismissing a third driving while yes, suspended. Yes, here's, uh, Jill, there's a copy of a journal entry that was filled out December 8th. Yeah, I have it here. Okay. And even though she's failed to appear, we're going to go with that. All right, state wants to dismiss count one in exchange for plea to the insurance in count two. Yes, Judge, and uh, parties are going to recommend, the journal entry states it'll be a 90-day underlying uh, sentences suspended, 12 months of non-reporting probation. In, uh, in the journal entry, it says payment of cost and fees must be within 90 days, but uh, Judge, after speaking to Ms. Stewart, I'd, I'd ask for uh, 120. She's she's just starting to get back to work. Uh, she's still looking for employment. 
and then uh, no violations of the law and probation may be terminated early if she uh, pays all costs and fees and no law li violations. There was a proposed journal entry in December, December 8th of 23. Correct. And that was with the understanding she was getting her license reinstated. She was really close. Did she get it reinstated? Judge, I don't know. I don't know the status of that, but the, the thing about it was, was I know she was in that process of doing it. That's why Mr. Dean gave the, uh, Right, because she was really close, and then she failed to appear at the next hearing. Ms. Right. Stewart, did you get your license reinstated? She's gonna do it tomorrow. For that. Um, I'm still, I'm still working on saving up the money for it, ma'am. Um, and then after I get that fine paid off, I have to wait three months. Well, as I re as my notes indicate, Mr. Dean made that agreement uh, conditioned upon you getting your license reinstated because you were really close and then you failed to appear at the hearing I, January 19th where you said, I never, supposed, stop, stop, please let me talk, where you were supposed to have it reinstated and we stayed all orders until 5 p.m. that day and you didn't apparently come through. You were picked up, came in on February 13th and now here we are at the end of March, almost April. So it looks like she didn't comply with the plea agreement, but the parties still want to go through it. Is that right, Ms. Gillette? Even no. if she hasn't complied with getting her license reinstated in four months? I never, I never once told Ms. him Stewart, that. Stewart, do not interrupt me. Ms. Gillette? Judge, I will honor Mr. Dean's plea agreement. He's not here because of a jury trial today. Right. But I understood the agreement was that she'd get her license reinstated and it's four months and she still has it. No, Judge, the, the agreement was was that she, that we knew she was working on it and the journal entry states and the defendant uh, reinstates driving privileges on obtaining a, a uh, that I believe that is part of the probation being terminated because it says an and the defendant. Well, so, I, feel, I feel like I'm being strung along here. Judge, we're not stringing you along at all. It was, there were, there were basically three conditions for Ms. Stewart to uh, get her probation terminated early. It was payment of all costs and fines, no driving, driving violations, and the defendant reinstating driving privileges and obtaining a restricted license. That's in the other. So there were three, there are three conditions for her to terminate her probation early if she gets that. It was, the plea agreement judge was never set that she had to get her license back to take advantage of this agreement. Well, here's why I feel like I'm getting strung along because uh, the defendant got a continuance from the court in December on the assurance that she was, quote, really close to getting her license reinstated, end quote. Now, I don't think I would have granted that continuance December 8th, January 19th, or December 13th, had she not been saying she was really close to getting her license reinstated. This defendant has been troublesome from the get-go. Uh, she's, she's taken an attitude with the court. She, ha she was eating and smoking and drinking her Dr. Pepper and smacking her fingers and and uh, when I asked her please not to do that in court in October of last year, she got uh, smart with the court and said, I have to take care of myself and pretty well told the court she was going to do whatever she wanted to do. Uh, her first appearance was May 23rd of 23. She told me that she was uh, applying for an attorney. She did and Shannon Cooper was appointed and we set it over to July 7th of 23. I reduced her bond at the defendant's request from 5,000 to 3,000. Then we had the July 7th episode, uh, incident where it was continued without objection to October. In October, that's when Mr. Paw took over for Mr. Cooper. 
and she had the attitude with the drinking and the eating because she had to take care of herself. Then we came in December, and that's when counsel and the defendant assured me she was really close to getting her license continued. Then in January, she fails to appear. I said it for bench trial then. I said, okay. In December, I said, okay, you're either going to have your license reinstated and do the plea agreement, or we're going to bench trial in January. Well, then she failed to appear in January. Then she shows back up on the first appearance docket and in February, and uh, we set it over for today and notified Mr. Paul. So you see why I think I'm getting strung along, Mr. Paul, regardless of what your plea agreement is. Now, Judge, as, as we know, sometimes it just takes longer than others. Um, and sometimes the court gets misled, and I feel like this is one of them. Well, I There was no intention to mislead the court in any way, shape, or form, Your Honor. I appear... Per, perhaps I not on the... I'm sure the, I'm sure not on, on, on counsel's part, but I just don't think Ms. Stewart is in any hurry well, or concern to resolve this. Well, she's she's ready to enter the plea today, Judge. All right. Well, she she's... this These tickets were issued in May, and now we're going to ignore the fact that she allegedly drove while her license was suspended at least three times and dismiss that, Ms. Gillette? Judge, this is the first time that I'm looking at this case since her first appearance way back in May of 2023. I know that Mr. Dean has worked with Mr. Paul on this agreement. I have it in writing in front of me, and Mr. Dean left significant notes, not only on the journal entry, but also on a complaint. And I'm honoring the agreement that Mr. Dean worked out because this is primarily his case. All right. So this all falls on Mr. Dean, it sounds like. He's the one that agreed to all of this. So, all right. Well, the state's dismissing your driving while suspended, Ms. Stewart, as you're hearing. So how do you plead to count two? operating a motor vehicle in Greenwood County, Kansas, on May 19th, 2023, on a public roadway without liability insurance. No contest. No contest. Guilty. Not even taking the responsibility. Is anyone making you take this, enter this plea today, Ms. Stewart? No. Um, you don't want to admit it, but you don't want to deny it, take it to trial. Is that right? Yeah. You understand that with this plea agreement, count two, driving while suspended, third or subsequent is dismissed, but you're not going to be able to have a trial on the no liability insurance. I understand. And if Ms. Gillette is able to give me a factual basis, she'll be found guilty and unable to appeal that conviction. I understand. All right, Ms. Gillette, what's your factual basis to support a no insurance charge? Judge, the defendant was pulled over May 19th, 2023 at 116 in the morning by Deputy Fisher. Um, she was driving upon US 400, uh, 54 Highway at 142nd Street. She was driving a Chevy 2003 two-door um, with a Kansas tag, um, and she had no proof of liability insurance with her at the time of the stop and deputy fisher did take her into custody and she did bond that night all right i find the defendant guilty of driving without insurance deputy fisher do you remember she had an attitude with you like i've seen in the court she was pretty compliant. She just asked me not to take her to jail. She also had a warrant out of Ford County, but they wouldn't extradite at the time of the traffic stop. What was that for, if you remember? Uh, I think she said petty theft. Well, she has a history, according to the Kansas Odyssey, going back to two. 2007 with disorderly conduct. She has um, burglary and theft, obstructing legal process, criminal trespass in 11. 16, we have CRFE. I'm not sure what that is. A couple of those. Interference with law enforcement in 2016. 
another 2016 unlawful possession with intent and driving while suspended and a registration dismissed and an insurance dismissed. 16, she had some forgery dismissed, probation for theft, a couple of financial card uh, criminal uses dismissed. She had another 16 criminal trespass dismissed, another 16 opiates uh, dismissed, paraphernalia, another 16. 16 was a very busy year. A lot of cases dismissed, a theft conviction, another trespass dismissed, theft probation, and then we go into 17, had a theft dismissed, a theft dis couple of criminal trespass and another driving while suspended dismissed. 2017, trespass driving while suspended dismissed in 2019. Then there was the extradition case from somewhere, 2018, probation for opiate opium, uh, while she had one, two, three, four charges dismissed. This isn't even legal. Including insurance and driving while suspended. What's not legal? For me to consider your criminal history for sentencing purposes is not legal, Ms. Stewart? For dismissed charges, you cannot use that against me. I'm not using them. I'm just going through your history. 2018, you had some thefts and criminal trespass dismissed. Uh, 2018, 2023, you have pending, it looks like, possession of opiate opium, uh, paraphernalia. You have a driving while suspended third. What jurisdiction is this? There's another... Liability insurance operating with, so it looks like you may still have those charges to deal with somewhere else. Oh, that's an AL county. That's in Allen County. You've got a felony drug charge and about. That, that she lives in Iola. That's that's Allen County. Correct. And, and then she's got a domestic battery pending in Allen County. She has. In pending in Allen County, another domestic battery from a different date. Uh, another pending in Allen County, possession of stolen property. Some kind of felony in Allen County. Some unknown misdemeanors, criminal damage to property. Uh, Greenwood County, we have our driving while suspended third that we're dealing with now. And then it says NOC, no origin of county maybe. She's posted bond for another felony drug and paraphernalia that's pending. Mm -hmm. She has same NOC, uh, felony drug, one of four, six, 22, one of four, 21, 23 still pending. Woodson County, she has... Probation, apparently she's on probation uh, as of January 13th, 2023. So maybe that's fin finished, but I'm not sure. It doesn't show it. But she entered no contest, please, and was put on probation. Failure to yield a stop sign and driving while suspended second. So, Ms. Stewart, I'm not considering the things that you were not convicted of, but I think you have plenty to that I can find you have been convicted of. And as I understand it, you are already on probation or did you complete your probation in Woodson County from January 13th of 23? I completed that. Okay, so you're not on probation for anything right now? No. But you have quite a few uh, cases pending, right? I mean, yeah, I haven't been convicted of them, though. Right, right. I know I'm just sorting through the factors that I do have to consider. So the state has uh, amended their charges. So the only thing you've been convicted of is operating a motor vehicle without insurance. And they charged it as a Class B non-person misdemeanor. And the penalties are up to six months in jail and a $1,000 fine, and at this time, your sentence 
is six months in the county jail. Your fine is $1,000. Now, Miss uh, Stewart, are you employed? Um, I have an interview today. Where's your interview? Uh, Casey's. In Eureka? No. Which, in oh, Iowa. in Iola? Where, which, yeah. which Casey's are you looking at? Iola. Okay. Have you ever lived in Eureka? No, I was just passing through. Okay. You have an interview today. When was the last time you were employed? Um, I've only been unemployed for a week. Where did you work, work uh, two weeks ago? Yeah. Where'd you work? Sonic. And was that Iola too? Yeah. All right. And was that a full-time job? Part-time. How many hours a week did you work? About 15 to 20. Okay. Did you have any other income? Um, No, but I stay working. I'm like, I always have a job usually. Okay. Married? Single? I uh, single. Children? Yes, I have two kids. Do you support those children? Yes, I do. Well, I'm going to waive your attorney fees. I'm going to, are the children in your home right now? Yes. How old are they? 11 and 8. And they've been in your full-time care? Yes. Do you have family in Iola? No, my mom's in the, dying of lung cancer right now, so. So she can't help. Okay. And they've never been in anybody's care but yours? No. Ms. Stewart, is that, is that your assurance to the court? Yeah. Well, you pose a problem. Have you ever done any jail time for any of these charges? Or have you always gotten probation? No, I've done prison time. What's I've done four longest, years. How much? What's the longest you've done? Four years. Was that in jail or prison? Prison. And how long ago was that? Um, I got out January 18th of 22. Of 22? Yeah. Where were your kids in that period of time then? My mom was in better health then, and she helped me when I was incarcerated. And they were they were in your mom's custody, not the state's? Yeah. Well, you see, I, I would put you, uh, the hesitation I'm having is whether to just put you in jail outright for your record and continuing to violate the law. But I'm thinking about your kids, although I'm not sure you're doing them any favors to continue to violate the law. Driving around without insurance puts a lot of people at jeopardy. If if you were to hit someone, who, who you know, they've got they're going to have bills to pay too. So let's see, a thousand in fines, one hundred and eight in court costs, forty five dollars booking fee. I'm going to give you at some point probation. So there's a sixty dollar probation fee. Looks like that comes to twelve. 13, you're going to owe $1,213 for putting everybody on the roadways at risk of driving without insurance. And you've done it before, even though that's not something that automatically enhances like it would if it were in the last three years. Would you rather I reduced your fine and gave you more jail time? Would that help you? No, I really don't want any jail time. Okay. Well, we need to do something to, why did you tell me back there in October you were close to getting your license back? I said when um, my taxes come back, I was going to try to- I'm sorry, Ms. Stewart, you cut out. Get huh? that. Um, I said when my taxes came back, I was going to try to get my fine paid off. And um, then I was going to, I have to wait three months after I pay it off in order to get my license. Like I've checked into it and I'm trying, like, and I haven't been driving. Well, back back in October wasn't even close to tax time. I guess it was December that was getting closer. 
Yeah. Are you anywhere close to getting your license reinstated? I mean, I'm saving up money to pay off the fine. It's kind of hard when I'm a single mom and, you know, I got rent and I got to take care of my kids plus myself on top of it. It's a little bit difficult. Well, there are a lot of single moms having a tough time out there and they don't have the issues you have going on. All right. Uh, the, I'm going to order that you uh, serve 30 days and then probation, reporting probation for a year. Can I do like weekends or something? You get, um, I'm going to review your, I'm going to review and complete your sentence one week or two weeks from oh. today. That's what our next traffic docket is, Missy. Yes, April 12th, I believe. Yeah, that's right, April 12th. All yes. Right. So and will I will I have to drive clear to Eureka? Well, ride clear to Eureka, or um, can I do it like Allen County or Neosho County? Or you better not be driving anywhere. I corrected but, that. I'm not. But I am giving you two weeks to appear in person at 9 a.m. at the Greenwood County Courthouse. Okay. Right. At that time, I want to know what your work, if you've got your job, and what your work schedule is so that we can decide when you're going to serve your 30 days and how you're going to serve them. Okay. That will give you time to talk to your employer, think about who's gonna watch the children, and we'll decide when you're going to do that. Your probation is going to start today so that as soon as this hearing is over, you call probation and get set up for reporting 12 month probation. So I show that it is 10.51 a.m. on March 29th. You have until 11 a.m. to be talking to your probation officer if they are available. If not, leave a message. Judge, did you say for her to appear at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock? Mr. Paul, do you prefer 10 o'clock? I that's, said, when, that's when you usually set me, Judge. Okay, that's 11. fine. So, 10 o'clock, okay, 10 o'clock, January 2nd, or no. April 12th. Thank you, April 12th, 10 o'clock, you must be here in person at the courthouse in Greenwood County with your work schedule, if you have a work schedule, and I want proof of your work schedule from your employer, because, and I'm going to order as a condition of probation that you do everything possible to get your license reinstated in the next year, and if you're going to have an automobile to get that insured and tagged and licensed. Okay. All standard conditions will apply. You will need to make minimum monthly payments, but that can be set up between you and your probation officer based on your abilities throughout the next year. Okay. All right. Anything else, Ms. Gillette, Mr. Paul? No. All right. You are excused, Ms. Stewart, to call your probation officer. Two weeks later. Ms. Stewart, if you'll come up closer to the screen, please. We're on the record in 2023 TR381, State of Kansas versus Rebecca Ann Stewart. Paul E. Dean for the state, Richard Paul for the defendants, who also appears in person. And Mr. Paul, what announcements do you have on her? Judge, you set this. We pled her, and then you ordered her jail time. And she was supposed to be bringing her work schedule in today yes. to schedule her time. Has she done that? Um, ma'am, I just started working and they told me that the days that I could get off is on Thursdays and Fridays, um, but I have to go to orientation tomorrow. Um, what, so do you mean you, what do you mean you just started working? Well, I ended up uh, getting a different job and I just started working. Well, when you were here March 29, 24, 
you needed some time to get your work schedule figured out before you started your sentence. You were supposed to serve 30 days. So we set it over for today, and you had just left a job at Sonic the week previously, and you were interviewing at a different Sonic. So did you start the job at Sonic? I was working at Sonic, but it didn't work out. Um, I was had an interview at a nursing home, but with my background, I couldn't do that. But I'm starting to work at McDonald's. I gave you a number to call immediately after court for probation. Did you do that? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes, I did call. Did you tell probation that you didn't start your job? I did start my job. I, I did. I was working. But then you left that job. We had a, a disagreement, and I went, and I was looking for another job right away, and I found one. Did you tell probation all of that? I wasn't for sure. Posting. All right. Well, let's just start your sentence at this time. Can I, I can't. Uh, ma'am, can I please just do like weekends, please? Because I don't have a babysitter. Ma'am, I don't have a babysitter and I'll lose my job. How long have you had this job? I'm just starting. And I that's how I'm going to start. Tomorrow. tomorrow, I go to orientation tomorrow. That's what you told me last time you were here and you didn't keep that job. And you have a horrific, you have a horrific record. I think we went over all of that the last time. With your adult, with your adult history beginning in 2016 and remaining heavy uh, right up to this case, other than I think you may have had a stint of time to serve in there, but you've had Everything, including drugs, burglary, theft, traffic. Damn it, I'm changing my life around. I'm just asking if I can do weekends. You have, do you still have charges pending in Allen County for felony drugs and five I've other? Trial. I've been clean. I've been sober. I have. Hold been on, sober. just answer my question, please. Do you still have that 2023 CR 117 for felony drugs and five other charges? including driving while suspended third or more. Do you still have that pending? My court dates are far apart. Well, your last court date when you were here was March 25th. Did you go to that court date? Yes. And they set it over again? Yes. And do you still have Allen County 2023 CR300080 for domestic violence? I go to court on that on this, I think, 17th. And do you still have Allen County 2023 CR 300018 for possession of stolen property? All of Allen County's court dates are on the same day. What date is it? I think the 17th. How about Allen I County 2023 CR 81 for stolen property? It's all on the 17th. And Allen County 24 CR 8. Nine for criminal damage. The 17th. I've been making all my court dates and I've been doing what I need to do. I'm just asking that if I could do weekends or Thursdays and Fridays, that way I don't lose my job and I well, have my. What's this? Well, I'm not sure. Are, you have some other counties with felony drugs, driving while suspended, improper passing a school bus, something that. That goes back to April 21st, 23. What county is that in? The only county that I knew of was Neosho and Allen. Okay, Neosho would probably be the NO. Okay, and that's still pending? Yeah, they've okay. set my court date so far apart on that. The driving while suspended, third or subsequent, and passing improper passing of a school bus, that's pending? Yeah. And uh, let's see. Got out of prison after four years in 2022, and all of that plus our case have been incurred since you were let out of prison in 22, right? Yeah. And I sentenced you to six months in jail to serve 30 days and then report to probation for the balance of the year. Ma'am, I swear I won't drive no more, and I will get my life turned around if I can just do Thursdays and Fridays. Well, you've, you told me you haven't kept your word to me. 
because I, rather than put you in jail the last time, you said you'd left your job at Sonic a week ago and you had an interview the next day. And yeah. uh, so I, had an I took no. into, you told me that, that you had your two children living with you. Who did they live with while you were in prison? My mom, and she has lung cancer. Yeah, that's what you told me last time, and you said she's not able to watch him, right? Um, well, I've given you since uh, March 29th to get this all worked out, and you've changed jobs. You apparently haven't gotten a babysitter because you say you need weekends. I have a babysitter on Thursdays and Fridays. I'm going to just order that you start your 30 day sentence and then I'll, I'll give you parole for the balance of the year. So Missy, can you have a, a deputy go ahead and take her in? I'm not fucking doing it. Hey, hey. I'm yeah. here. Right, I'm not fucking doing it. <laughs> All right, take her into custody, please. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, now when she's released she can go to parole but she took off before I could tell her she needs to report directly to probation for supervision probation slash is that Carrie down there great okay that was Carrie right? Carrie she used to do 30 days and then I want her to sign up but she should have signed up with you by now. Did she do that? She did call, Your Honor, but Jessica is the one who got the phone call, and I haven't heard from her since. That's why I came down here to have her fill out paperwork for me. So I was just waiting here to see what would happen in court. Okay. Paperwork and let her know. All right. So, yeah, and if she doesn't want to cooperate, then you'll do whatever it is you need to do. But, uh yeah, I'm going to have her serve 30 days of her six-month sentence, and then she can report for the balance of the year if she, if she will do that. Thank you. Thank you.